Welcome, I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. Netflix is about to wrap up its longest-running original series in the streaming giant's history, Grace and Frankie. Its two stars, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, gave the show its soul as only two legends can. Our Tracy Smith caught up with a duo who aren't about to let age slow them down. In the show, the two women became friends only after their husbands, played by Martin Sheen and Sam Waterston, reveal that they're in love with each other. You mean you're gay, and this is who you're gay with? And getting married. Oh, wait, wait. Hilarity ensues. I don't want to be alone. I'm here. But the show's humanity endures. We both have been told by women who have faced terrible things that watching Grace and Frankie has kept their head above water, given them hope. We're almost there! It's also given them a million laughs. Do we look like we're senile and can't remember anything? Where is the car? There's more from their chat coming up a little later in the show. How important do you think female friendship is, especially as we get older? Oh, it's really important. It's life-saving. It's life-saving. Well, first of all, women live longer. And so, you know, as you're getting older, you're going to want to have women friends, especially when they're a little bit younger than you are. Um, you know, so that, you know, when you go out, they'll be there at your bedside <laughs> holding your hand. And um, women's friendships are very different than men's friendships. Men's friendships are side by side looking out. Women's friendships are face to face going deep going deep. Women say, I'm in trouble. I need help. Help me. <laughs> Men never do. Men don't ask for help. Then Martha Teichner takes us to visit an art museum worthy of the Louvre, except this one is way off the beaten path. In 2011, the only attraction in Bentonville's once sleepy square was the five and dime Sam Walton ran before founding Walmart. <laughs> there were no hip restaurants or coffee shops. These weren't here. The number of works of public art before Crystal Bridges, zero. Now, around 130. Designed by architect Moshe Safdie, Crystal Bridges is surrounded by miles of art-filled paths and bike trails nature and art linked. Admission free. Drop-ins encouraged. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. The reason Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin have such good chemistry on screen isn't only because they're great actors. They're also great friends, long-time ones actually, whose passion for the craft as well as social activism has kept them as relevant as ever. Here they are with our Tracy Smith. We're making vibrators for women with arthritis. Yes, vibrators. Brilliant. Grace! How could this not be entertaining? Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin are Grace and Frankie, two feisty octogenarians who see old age not as a death sentence, but as a victory lap. I'm an 80-year-old woman, and I've earned the right to take my sweet time. <laughs> That's my girl. Hello. In the show, the two oh. women became friends only after their husbands, played by Martin Sheen and Sam Waterston, reveal that they're in love with each other. You mean you're gay? And this is who you're gay with? And getting married. Oh, wait, wait. Hilarity ensues. I don't want to be alone. I'm here. But the show's humanity endures. We both have been told by women who have faced terrible things that watching Grace and Frankie has kept their head above water, given them hope. We're almost there! It's also given them a million laughs. Do we look like we're senile and can't remember anything? Where is the car? Tomlin and Fonda actually are great friends in real life, but they're not exactly like the women they play. For instance, Jane Fonda doesn't drink nearly as much as Grace. Yeah, you stopped drinking. And here's why. It's because even with one drink, like if I had a martini tonight, I would be at half-mast tomorrow. 
Now that wasn't true when I was younger. But as you get older, I think alcohol affects you differently. And I, I only have so many tomorrows left. I don't want to be at half-mast for any of them. Grace and Frankie premiered in 2015 and is now wrapping up its seventh and final season, making it the longest running original series on Netflix ever. Did either of you imagine starting out that at this point in your lives you would have a steady gig like this? No. No, I didn't. No. I was ready to go on the road again. A child was asked to describe the feeling of joy. She said it's mild and gentle on your hands. <laughs> I worry that drugs have forced us to be more creative than we really are. Back in the 70s, Lily Tomlin's Road Act was her widely acclaimed one-woman show, appearing nightly. I thought you liked that other kind of cake, that cake with the icing. Police, stop talking about that cake! When Jane went to see it, she just started working on an idea for a movie that would become nine to five. What did you think watching Lily on stage? I fell in love. I mean, I was blown away, and when I left the theater that night, I said to myself, I'm not making a movie about secretaries unless, unless Lily Tomlin is in it. And we she know how that theaters. turned out. You mean she's a, a company spy? Shh, I wouldn't say that. I would just say that if you want to gossip in the ladies' room, I'd check first under the stalls for her shoes. Happy birthday, Myra. But you may not know that Lily Tomlin quit after the first day of shooting. I said, just, you have to let me out of the movie. You don't have to pay me anything. I thought I was just <laughs> awful. I said, I'm just gonna ruin the movie. And then I saw the dailies from the second day, because he couldn't draw up the papers quickly enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I, and I thought, well, I'm pretty good. It's okay now. I think I'll just keep this part. <laughs> <laughs> They've been friends since, together on set, Climate change has got to go! Hey, hey. And occasionally on the protest lines. In 2019, the pair, who both have a long history of social activism, were arrested together on the steps of the U.S. Capitol during a demonstration over climate change. Forests are a key ally. Maybe Turns out Jane Fonda started making her famed workout tapes to raise cash to support causes she believed in. And so I thought, well, maybe I should start a company that will fund what we're trying to do. And I had a very smart friend who said, never go into a business that you don't understand. But there was one thing I knew, which was exercise. She sold close to 17 million copies of her Feel the Burn tapes, and she gave most of her profits away. In fact, she still does. She does that. She gives all her money away. I mean, this jacket, I've seen this at least 10 times. <laughs> Still, her lifetime of exercise has had benefits beyond merely financial. At 84, she looks great. In fact, they both do. I'm super conscious that I'm closer to death and, and it doesn't really bother me that much. What bothers me is um, that my body is, you know, basically not mine. My knees are not mine, my <laughs> hips are not mine, my shoulders not mine. <laughs> You're looking at somebody who's only me from here up. <laughs> oh, gross, I'm Francis. Truth is, what makes Jane and Lily and Grace and Frankie work is that fake joints and all. Thank you so much. They seem so very real. The fact is, if you're alive and relatively healthy at an older, I mean, I'm almost 85. The fact that I'm still alive and working, wow. Who cares if I don't have my old joints? and I can't ski or bike or run anymore. Eh. You know, you can be really old at 60, and you can be really young at 85. Health. <laughs> That's beautifully put. Why are you laughing? I just like to hear her talk. <laughs> yeah. More from Jane and Lily in just a few minutes. But first, how the purchase of a single work of fine art transformed one community into a booming art town. The first time I ever saw it in person when it came up for auction, I had goosebumps and I cried. We've heard about food deserts, places where access to affordable, healthy fruit and vegetables are 
rare at best. But world-class art can be hard to access too, unless you're in one of the art capitals of the world. Still, Martha Teichner is about to take us to a museum in one out-of-the-way town in the South, with an art museum that rivals pretty much all of them. The first time I ever saw it in person when it came up for auction, I had goosebumps and I cried. And when Alice Walton of the Walmart Waltons paid $35 million for kindred spirits and carted it off to Bentonville, Arkansas, her hometown, with the intention of building a museum to put it in, the art establishment sneered. Bentonville? Really? I look at it as really more provincialism that caused that reaction and not understanding that people here can love and admire and respect and support art and culture and deserve the right to have it. The sneering stopped when Crystal Bridges opened in 2011. The most beautiful museum filled with the best art the second richest woman in the world could buy. Her fortune currently estimated at over $68 billion. The slight curve gives you the ability to see all the paintings Designed by architect Moshe Safdi, Crystal Bridges includes actual bridges. The museum is surrounded by miles of art-filled paths and bike trails. Nature and art linked. Admission free. Drop-ins encouraged. My motivation to do Crystal Bridges was all about access and access for people that don't have it. Diverse people, rural people. What do you notice about all of these? More than six million people have visited the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art since it opened, with 750,000 expected this year. Before the museum, was there an arts and culture tourism sector in this region? Non-existent, non-existent. And now? It's huge. In 2011, the only attraction in Bentonville's once sleepy square was the five and dime Sam Walton ran before founding Walmart. <laughs> there were no hip restaurants or coffee shops. These weren't here. The number of works of public art before Crystal Bridges, zero. Now, around 130. This definitely wasn't here. Bentonville's population has nearly doubled since 2010. The museum is a factor, and it's growing too. So we're, you know, moving down the valley with another, you know, full gallery space, 100,000 new square feet. Right there. Right there. Olivia Walton, married to Alice Walton's nephew, Tom, is now chair of the museum's board. I think Crystal Bridges is sort of an artery of the community which is why it opened The Momentary, an art and event space in an old cheese factory. At night, it's lit up with the museum's mission statement. You belong here. Here is a portrait of Andrew Jackson, and he is nailed with text that comes from treaties that were signed with indigenous inhabitants of this land and were broken. This painting is a perfect example of, yes, it's a beautiful piece of art, but it tells a story, an American story, not a pretty one, but it needs to be known. The museum's collection is now 3,500 works, more than twice what it was a decade ago, so that the American story being told within its walls better mirrors the America outside. Art has become a part of the DNA of this community, and that's a huge transformation. For Alice Walton, Crystal Bridges is a work in progress, but one that illustrates the work of art. I don't really look at it like Crystal Bridges is responsible for this, but what I do look at is if you were sitting around a campfire and someone had to light it, you have to have the spark. Oh man, you do not want to be on her bad side. She's gotten mad at me a few times and it's terrifying. After the break, more from our exclusive extended interview with Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda.
We'll be right back. Welcome back. As promised, here is more of Tracy Smith's candid conversation with two legends still going strong in their 80s. For you guys, what's the, what's the best part about getting older? It's so hard to be young. Who, do, who am I supposed to know? What am I supposed to do? What do I want? Who am I? What is my place in the world? There's so many questions that you, you don't know how to answer. It's just fraught. And then when you're older, it's like, ah, you know, I've been there, done that. That happened to me, <laughs> and I'm still around. You know, it's just, I think as long as you're healthy, health is the bottom line. If you're healthy, old age can be the best of all times. And it bothers me that people are so frightened of death that they don't like to think about it. I think that it's very important to think about it because it determines how you live. It, it frames how you live, I think. Knowing that it's gonna to come to an end. How do I want this time on earth to be? How do I want my, my time here to have mattered? And you can't wait until the, the end to think about it. You have to start early. So uh, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I, that I do that. Do you think about legacy? No, I don't really, because I don't think uh, there's very few legacies that really stand the, the uh, uh, stress of time. And it'll, it'll all wear out eventually. You think so? I mean, you really have to do something extraordinary to, um, to do that, to warrant that kind of place in history. I mean... Oh, I just worry about my kids and my grandkids. And I guess kids are, kids are your legacy, right? And um, so I think about that a lot. How important is having a sense of humor? to staying Oh, young. I think it's terribly important. I think, I think people who don't have a sense of humor or who live in a culture that suppresses all that is pretty hard to take. Um, what are you most grateful for? I mean, I've had a career now for 50 years, more than 50 years, and um, it's just like gone by in a snap, but um, I, after all is said and done, I'm grateful that, I'm so grateful that I had that and that way to express myself and just be and, and my mother, my mother's name is Lily and um, she was so tickled when I got famous because she said, oh, it's just wonderful because now I, I, they let me in the beauty parlor first and, and <laughs> so you kind of have that but you have, you know, rude moments where they don't know who you are. And you say, well, gee whiz, the last guy, he gave me a free hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> um, you two have been called legends. What do you guys think of that word? Oh, have I? It's thrown around with a lot of facility, I might say. Although it's true of her, of course. She <laughs> did skinny dip with Garbo, <laughs> which I've never forgotten. Do you feel like a legend? No. No, I don't either. I'm very happy about the fact that I, I still feel like a novice. I still feel that I'm just learning, and um, every part is a challenge, and I'm nervous before every role. You know, I'm glad that I've never taken it for granted. Do you think about how you'd like to be remembered career-wise, or what you've done activism-wise? I just, I don't think that my career as an actor is as important uh, in the world as my work as an activist. And I just, like most of us, I, you know, I would like to feel that somehow in my life I've helped to make things better on different levels, you know. How important do you think female friendship is, especially as we get older? Oh, it's really important. It's life-saving. It's life-saving. Well, first of all, women live longer, 
And so, you know, as you're getting older, you're going to want to have women friends, especially when they're a little bit younger than you are. Um, you know, so that, you know, when you go out, they'll be there at your bedside <laughs> holding your hand. And um, women's friendships are very different than men's friendships. Men's friendships are side by side looking out. Women's friendships are face to face going deep going deep. Women say, I'm in trouble. I need help. Help me. <laughs> Men never do. Men don't ask for help. So let me ask you, when did you know that woman has my back, the two of you? Was there a moment when you knew or time when you knew she really has my back? It's unspoken. You, you just feel it. You know, I feel that uh, Jane would absolutely be there for me or cover for me or whatever I needed. You know, I just love her. She's, uh, she's, she's like a, the 10 year old girl in ballet class who is <laughs> sure she's gonna get a gold star from the ballet teacher. I mean, she's so enthusiastic about anything she's involved in. I learn a lot from her, just being around her, watching her, listening to her, watching her perform. And she's, um, she's just a lot of fun. She's a lot of fun to be with, and um, I don't know. We have the same values. Uh, she thinks I'm worthwhile. I mean, like, she is created out of empathy. I've rarely met someone with as much empathy as she has, and, and I feel the same way as she just said. She's, she's so loyal. She's so... <laughs> I can't believe how loyal she is. She's there for her friends and will fight for them. And man, she calls me Fido. The only thing is that when she, she gets angry, that. oh man, you do not want to be on her bad side. She's gotten mad at me a few times, and it's terrifying. <laughs> I, I don't even recall. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm Lee Callen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun. <laughs>